I'm Jeremiah McKinnon, and this is NEC News Today. Here now are the top cannabis news stories from around New England for March 24th, 2023. More students in Boston were sent to the hospital in an ambulance after eating cannabis edibles on school grounds. During the month of March, Boston school officials have seen at least two incidents of young students eating cannabis edibles. In both instances, students were sent to the hospital in an ambulance as a precaution. Earlier in the month, students at the Maurice J. Tobin School in Roxbury reportedly ate a cannabis-infused chocolate bar. More recently, NBC Boston reports that an incident at the Henderson Upper School in Dorchester involving students who ate a cannabis edible resulted in the ambulance coming for multiple children. Officials in Boston are asking parents to remain vigilant and to keep cannabis locked away and out of the reach of minors. So I will reiterate, parents, please lock up your cannabis. To follow up on last week's story involving Asian data being mistakenly released, a report from WGBH has revealed the identity of who received those files. Grant Ellis, a cannabis blogger from Massachusetts, has gone on record claiming to be the recipient of the personal information of thousands of former and current marijuana agents from the Cannabis Control Commission. According to WGBH, Ellis and fellow blogger Eric Casey of Burn After Reading were investigating allegations of financial ties between Cureleaf and a Russian oligarch when the commission inadvertently included the names, contact information, and addresses of thousands of marijuana agents and the reason for their termination in response to a public records request by Ellis. The commission asked Ellis to delete any shared files that were sent inadvertently, but did not notify affected constituents about the data leak until the following week. This week, I wanted to try something truly impressive, and that's exactly what I found when I picked up some cannabis grown by Impressed LLC. I was not disappointed. I got a hold of their K-Dynamite strain, and it was impressive, to say the least. The flower is visually stunning and smokes great in joints and bowls. The company's slogan of smoke it all, will grow more is reassuring to those who remember the days when finding good flower was challenging. For the full review, including photos, please visit NECnewsToday.com. This episode of NEC News Today is brought to you by CBD Please, the first CBD store east of the Mississippi and your local resource for reasonably priced, lab-tested cannabis extracts. CBD Please was founded in 2014 by Bill Downing, who has been a leader in Massachusetts cannabis law reform since 1990. CBD Please offers everything from premium quality organic hemp buds to extracts, tinctures, and many other cannabinoids. Visit cbdplease.com for more information. In Vermont, the state's 92% tax on vape products will no longer apply to cannabis and hemp products. An excessive 92% tax that was being applied to cannabis vape products is set to be lifted as of July 1, 2023. The update is the result of the recently passed Vermont Budget Adjustment Act. Cannabis retailers struggle to make money selling the products due to the high wholesale tax. Lawmakers acted to adjust the language to ensure that cannabis and hemp are exempt. However, the hardware that is used to vaporize the cannabis will still be subject to the tax. The tax on vapes was originally passed in 2019 as a measure to prevent the youth use of vape products, but ended up impacting the recreational cannabis industry, which started adult use sales October 1, 2022. Massachusetts-based manufacturing company Fernway has unveiled their new line of pre-rolled joints infused with terpenes. Northampton-based cannabis manufacturing company Fernway may be popular for their ubiquitous brand of cannabis vapes, but now the company is making their very own terpene-infused joints. According to the company, each pre-roll is created with cannabis that tests 25% THC or above and is gently infused with their recognizable terpene blends. Fernway says they designed a special pre-roll experience that caters to the cannabis consumer with a luxe black ceramic tip, ultra-thin rice paper, and a freshness cork to preserve flavor. For now, the Fernway joints are available in berry haze, mango, blueberry cake, and Berkshire gold. Soon, the Fernway flower experience will continue with the launch of a premium flower line that provides consumers with curated and high-quality strains. House lawmakers in New Hampshire recently passed two cannabis bills, including a measure for medical home grow that is now sent to the Senate for review. After passing a bill that would legalize cannabis in February that would impose a tax system and create a regulatory framework to control the industry, New Hampshire lawmakers have now passed an alternative bill that does not contain those restrictions. The bill, introduced by Representative Kevin Verville, would simply remove marijuana from New Hampshire's list of prohibited substances. According to a post from the 10th Amendment Center, the bill, HB 360, received 210 votes in favor and 160 votes in opposition. The proposal moves on to the New Hampshire Senate, where cannabis bills normally die. New Hampshire representatives also passed a bill that would allow medical marijuana patients and their caregivers to grow their own supply of cannabis. 
Democratic Representative Wendy Thomas introduced HB 431 that would permit the cultivation of up to three mature cannabis plants, three immature cannabis plants, and 12 seedlings at a primary residence. The bill resembles the attempt made in 2019 that was vetoed by Governor Sununu and did not have the required two-thirds support in both chambers to be overridden. Last but not least this week, in Warwick, Rhode Island, Solar Cannabis Company has opened the state's latest cannabis dispensary. Solar Cannabis Company, a vertically integrated cannabis company with locations in Seekonk, Somerset, and Dartmouth, Massachusetts, has opened their first store in neighboring Rhode Island. The company is known for implementing sustainable and innovative practices such as solar technology to power their cultivation facility. The Rhode Island Solar Cannabis Dispensary is located at 65 Meadow Street in Warwick. The company opened this week for a soft opening, but has plans for a grand opening celebration that will take place on Friday, March 31st. The Warwick Dispensary serves both medical marijuana patients and adult-use consumers. For the absolute latest New England cannabis news, head on over to necnewstoday.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video. Subscribe to NEC News Today for more great content and hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode of the show. For New England Cannabis News Today, this is Jeremiah McKinnon reminding you to always use cannabis responsibly and to enjoy your cannabis-filled adventures throughout New England.